We've all been sold the same story for decades, right? The narrative that the F-22 Raptor or the B-2 Spirit are basically invincible. Hollywood movies and defense contractors tell us these multi-billion dollar, stealth beasts, can go through any air defense network, drop their payload, and fly home without a scratch. For the last 30 years, this has been the bedrock of American global hegemony, the simple rule of, I can see you, but you can't see me. But what if I told you that rulebook has just been shredded? Recently, data regarding China's latest self-developed radar has sent shockwaves through the defense community. We are talking about a detection range of 8,000 kilometers. Now, 8,000 is just a number, so let me put that into perspective for you. That's like standing in Beijing and not only spotting a bird in western China but seeing all the way to Heathrow Airport in London. But here's the kicker, it's not just about distance. According to reports from Jane's Defense Weekly and various Western think tanks, this new radar technology is turning the U.S. military's prized, invisibility cloak, into the Emperor's new clothes. Why has the legendary U.S. paved pause radar suddenly started to look obsolete? And how did China use a simple principle of basic physics to turn hundreds of billions of dollars worth of stealth fighters into flying scrap metal? Today, we're going deep into the hard tech. We're talking about the invisible war of electromagnetic waves and how it fundamentally alters the chessboard of U.S.-China geopolitics. Buckle up. This isn't just about radar. This is about who gets to survive in the future. Act I, the blind man and the X-ray, the setup. First, we need to understand why radar is essentially God in modern warfare. On the military chessboard, whoever sees further holds the entry ticket to strike first. For a long time, this was a painful subject for China. In the 1990s, an era Chinese strategists often refer to when they talk about learning the hard way. China was effectively blindfolded in the boxing ring due to Western technology blockades. Back then, if you wanted advanced early warning radar, you had to beg to buy it. At that time, the U.S. paved pause radar system was like the sword of Damocles hanging over everyone's head monitoring every move from thousands of kilometers away. But now, the script has flipped completely. It sounds crazy, but China hasn't just achieved self-sufficiency. They've managed to leapfrog the competition in core technologies. The secret lies in a very basic physics concept, wavelength. Let's have a quick physics lesson that even an MIT professor would appreciate. Traditional fire control radars mostly chase high frequencies and short wavelengths like the X-band. Why? Because the shorter the wave, the higher the resolution. It's like using a surgical scalpel. It's very precise. But high-frequency radar has a fatal flaw. It lacks penetration power. And the real killer? Stealth aircraft are specifically designed to defeat this band. The geometric shape of a stealth fighter is engineered to deflect these short waves like a mirror, scattering them so the radar gets no return signal. So, to a traditional radar, an F-22 looks like a bumblebee, or it disappears entirely. But China's new radar went the other way. They went all in on the P-band. What is the P-band? It uses a relatively low frequency with a long wavelength, about one meter. Imagine you throw a handful of fine sand at a fishing net. The sand, short waves, goes right through. The net doesn't react. But what if you throw a large rock, long waves? No matter how that net is designed, it's going to feel the impact. This is like a giant with X-ray vision. When the radar wavelength is close to or larger than the aircraft's structural components, like the wings or tail fin, a physics phenomenon called Rayleigh scattering or resonance occurs. In the face of this bandwidth, those expensive radar absorbent coatings and carefully calculated geometric shapes become transparent. As popular mechanics once grudgingly admitted in a report, Against long-wave radar, current stealth technology faces a massive challenge. It's not just about seeing. Something is there. It's about capturing the true physical profile of the target. Act 2, the breakthrough, gone and ASA, the turning point. But theory alone isn't enough. If solving the problem was as simple as making the wavelength longer, why didn't the US or Europe just do it? This brings us to two decisive black tech barriers, and this is where China has truly pulled ahead. 
Barrier 1 Energy To shoot a P-band radar wave 8,000 kilometers away and have it reflect back to you, you need terrifying amounts of energy. It's like trying to illuminate a coin from thousands of miles away with a flashlight. Your flashlight needs to be as bright as the sun. This requires a material known in the semiconductor world as the god material, gallium nitride gone. You might have heard of this when buying a fast charger for your phone, but in military radar, gone is equivalent to the infinity stones in Marvel. Compared to traditional gallium arsenide or silicon-based materials, gone can withstand extreme voltage and heat with a power density 10 times higher. With GON, the radar works like a super searchlight, blasting out high-intensity, high-stability signals. Here is the fascinating business logic. The US invented GON technology, but due to supply chain deindustrialization, a problem highlighted in multiple recent Pentagon reports, and China's export controls on gallium and germanium, the raw materials, we have an ironic situation. China possesses the world's most complete gone supply chain and the lowest manufacturing costs. Bloomberg has analyzed this, noting that this control over raw materials allows China to mass-produce high-performance radars like sausages, while Western nations are still struggling with supply chain costs and yield rates. Barrier 2. The Smart Brain. Active Electronically Scanned Array, AESA. When you think of old-school radar, you picture a giant dish mechanically spinning around clunky and slow. If the motor breaks, the radar is blind. But modern mainstream radar uses ASA technology. Imagine the face of the radar covered in thousands of tiny transmit slash receive modules. Each module is an independent. I. The scary part of this technology is its multitasking capability. It doesn't need to physically turn. By controlling the signal phase of each unit, it can steer the beam in microseconds. It can stare at an intercontinental ballistic missile, ICBM, thousands of kilometers away, scan for a nearby stealth fighter, and guide its own interceptor missiles, all at the same time. This flexibility allows the radar to lock onto targets even in complex electronic jamming environments. This is why I say the US, Pave Pause, has been left in the dust. Pave Pause is a phased array, yes, but it's a product of a previous generation. It has high maintenance costs, and, in terms of signal processing flexibility, it simply cannot compete with China's new radar based on the latest algorithms and GAN hardware. Act 3. The Big Picture. From Seeing to Killing. Now let's zoom out. From the technical details to the geopolitical chessboard, what does owning a radar that sees 8,000 kilometers actually mean? It's not just seeing. It is anti-access slash area denial, A2 slash AD. Most people don't have a concept of 8,000 kilometers. Geostrategically, this means the first island chain, the second island chain, and even the U.S. base in Guam are all under this unblinking gaze. But that's not the biggest headache for the adversary. Modern air defense isn't about lone wolves. It's a tightly integrated network. The radar system acts as the eyes of the command center. It monitors aerial dynamics in real time and that data is instantly transmitted via high-speed data links to the HANS, the HQ, Red Banner, Series Air Defense Systems, or the DF, Dongfeng, Missile Series. This forms a high-low integrated command system, from the eye in the sky to the hand on the ground. U.S. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall has repeatedly expressed concern in congressional hearings about this. Kill Chain because once a radar can not only detect you but also guide a missile to hit you, the safety zone for U.S. carrier strike groups in the western Pacific gets pushed back by thousands of kilometers. This is asymmetric warfare. China doesn't need to build as many aircraft carriers as the U.S. They just need a radar and missile network strong enough to make the opponent's carriers afraid to approach. We have to admit, China took its lumps in the radar field in the past. Back then, they were the Student. But technology blockades often produce an unintended side effect. The backfire effect. When you completely block a road, you force your opponent to blaze a brand new, wider trail. From nights spent in microwave anechoic chambers to the breakthrough in gone materials, this full-chain technological autonomy was figured out from scratch. Because China now controls every link in the core chain, the reliability of the system has skyrocketed. This isn't just a leap in numbers. 
It's a qualitative change in the entire industrial system and research capability. The outro, more than just defense. Finally, I want to leave you with a thought. The highest form of defense is making the opponent realize the cost of attack is unbearable. With this tangible technological breakthrough, going from student to leader, China has secured the confidence to guard its skies. This 8,000-kilometer detection range measures more than just physical space. It measures the shifting balance of power and great power competition. The battle between stealth and anti-stealth is like the eternal game of the spear and the shield. But in this round, thanks to the holy trinity of the P-band, gallium nitride, and phased arrays, the scales seem to be tipping. For us regular folks, this might just be a tech news headline. But for those forces used to roaming the skies with impunity, this is a rule change they are forced to adapt to. Question of the day. So, here is today's question. Do you think that as anti-stealth radar technology becomes widespread, stealth fighters like the F-35 and B-21 will become completely obsolete in the next 20 years? Or will they evolve new countermeasures? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I read every single one. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next deep dive. Peace.